Laura, it's great to see you. Welcome. Hi. You are feeling bullish or were you bearish and you're reluctantly sort of chasing these high or just kind of give me some context here? Right. So I think generative AI is like a whole new area that's going to drive cloud performance. Um, I, I think like the old AI, Big Blue, which is the most famous traditional machine learning, had, was trained on 8,000 parameters. This new generative AI is trained on 175 billion parameters. So they're almost like not the same business. And I think generative AI um, is really expensive. These foundation models cost $3 billion at OpenAI, and it took three years to build. Microsoft funded most of that. And so you need to be a big company and you need to have cloud resources. And the great news is once, so ChatGPT is an app that was built on the OpenAI large language model. Once you build an app on an AWS foundation model or Google or Microsoft's, you know, OpenAI, you're not moving. Like if you're a business, you can't, you would have to start over mm -hmm. by you know, creating. So I think it's going to create a lot of stickiness in these third party cloud providers and also drive revenue upside for a decade. I think this is a structural new form of business competition. Yeah. And 95% of businesses will not build their own 175 billion foundation model. They'll build apps on the ones that exist at the big cloud providers. Daniel, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, this is one of the most breakthrough transcendent technological innovations we've seen. We've already seen quite a few pretty good ones. You do think the cloud providers win the most. So when I mentioned the list of kind of the five biggest gainers this year, uh, we said you kind of narrowed that down to three, but maybe we're over narrowing it. You seem pretty enthusiastic about all of them. Well, I'm really enthusiastic. I mean, we cover Amazon and Google, so that would be our call. You know, we're a little less um, sanguine about Meta, which, as you say, is up a lot, but they're only, they're working on creating their own foundation models at 65 billion parameters. But the reason you want more parameters is that Generative AI makes new stuff. It creates new content. It creates new images. Well, if it's trained on 65 billion parameters, it's not going to be as good at generating the next new thing as somebody who trained on AWS or Google with a, Google has actually a trillion parameters in its large language models. So you're just going to end up with better new content out of those larger models. So we're a little less um, positive on meta in this particular aspect of generative AI. You know what's unique, and I'm, I'm thinking about some of the companies, you know, who are powering this disruption. Uh, for instance, I think it's stability.ai, stable diffusion. I mean, all of there are a lot of these different startups, but there's not a lot of publicly available ones to trade. And the funny thing is, kind of unlike past innovation cycles, the way to trade it fundamentally already exists and already exists in our biggest and most successful companies. So it just seems like a rare opportunity. And I don't know how much more they can move to the upside before all of this hype uh, is really priced in. Well, and the large get larger here because you have to have data flows and round numbers like Microsoft has said publicly, it will commit $13 billion to own 49% of open AI is its foundation model. So these things take tens of billions of dollars to create and then have losses from. So that just means the big get bigger. These regulators that are trying to stop the massive, it, it, it's gonna be impossible. Like the regulators, this, this new gen of AI is gonna make these big stocks even bigger and smaller companies will use the foundation models at those big companies to build apps on. Just makes the divide, the divide between companies larger. Yeah, last thing real quickly, just your price target on all of these implies how much upside? Um, I think um, on this, specifically on generative AI, which is a piece of their business, I think it's 15% on yeah. this particular aspect. Yeah, given that they've already had the runs that they've had. Okay, you know I'm just waiting till I can talk to you about Netflix. And sure. so the password sharing crackdown seems to have been one of the most bullish catalysts we've ever seen for a stock like this, maybe other than AI. Um, is the hype going to be met with the uh, numbers in their next quarter, do you think? No, I don't think so, because ultimately all a password sharing thing is a price increase, right? They're saying, OK, I pay $20 today. My kids can no longer use my password. I go down to $8 and then my kids have the right to pick $8 each. Let's say they all do that or they all don't do that. But two years from now, that's it. Like now you need another price increase. It's just a form of hidden price increase, which is not a structural growth driver forever. It's just moving decks around on the tide, you know, chairs around on the Titanic because People that are paying 20 and $23 probably have a lot of password shares out of home. I don't We're know. all going to go back to eight bucks.